everyone and I'm just gonna leave it that there that's a fun little image why not um yeah this is going to be like a a brief author video because I am still searching for an agent for my book so like why not talk about a little bit of the process of writing and somewhat and uh, Lady Blades is definitely a special book for me uh, I've been writing since I was like 11 or 12 years old uh, personally and just like developing my style and everything like that and for 20 years yeah it's been like uh, it's it's really been a process of like learning about stuff and actually uh, while I've got you here uh, I've got some new uh, DVD shout outs uh, I recently got I have gotten over the past year a ton of Criterion collections some people like them some people don't uh, I think when they're done well, they are great quality. They especially have great features. I recently got uh, the Blue Rise Kingdom, uh, probably Wes Anderson's best movie, at least for me. I also got uh, Attack of the Fifty Foot Cheerleader. Um, most people don't pay much attention to these Attack of the Fifty Foot Women. Uh, it's a subgenre in and of itself. This honestly is probably the funniest of like any of these this style movie just for the fact that they pretty much uh, give uh, John Landis a cameo to just beat the snot out of him um, I do like a lot of John Landis's movies he's kind of a despicable human being for me at least he comes off as that and just ridiculous and yeah the late the new Kim Possible uh, Disney Channel movie I'll, I'll say on this level it's pretty much what I expected it's it's kind of of a of it's pretty much a weak Spy Kids. It's what I expected it to be. Fortunately, it wasn't as bad as the Fairly Odd Parents live action movies. Those are really bad. Uh, but the best part about them coming out is uh, they re-released the Kim Possible DVDs. Unfortunately, it's not the entire series. I wish they would eventually get around to doing that. They did it with Gravity Falls. Why not Kim Possible? Uh, there's fan base out there, guys. So anyway, um, Lady Blades was a particular challenge to me because this was like the very first novel where I instinctively decided this had to be an all-female cast. There is really no major male characters. There's no minor male characters. There's like probably like two, three character male characters in the whole entire book. Uh, there's only one major one. He's not in it until the last chapter, so that's like... Uh, saying something, but it did like give me like some kind of a personal freedom, but it also like probably one of my major hindrances because like although in my personal life like seventy five percent of my family tree is uh, female, so like I have a lot of female relatives. I hang out with a lot of female friends, so like it when I hang out, I'm pretty much a hermit. Uh, but like. The, the people that I'm closest to are usually women, so uh, it it was always like a I I love uh, the Stephen King line where like he talks about writing Carrie for the first time and one of his major discomforts for it, despite the fact that he meant for it to be a short story that ended up it's not going to sell good unless it's like a novel. He, his biggest issue was like, well, it's it's pretty much I'm a man stuck on an uh, stuck on a female planet. And I, and I did feel very much like that. Uh, it did feel like at times where, like, I was really struggling with the fact where, like, I like female characters. I love writing female characters. Uh, hence, there's four major, there's four main uh, ladies in this uh, novel. But um, I did feel like, am I really representing uh, this right? Uh, I did not want there to be, like, all those cliches where you expect, like, female literature to go. I did not want shopping. I did not want makeup. I pretty much said, like, I'm not treating this like it's another soap opera. I want these to be real characters. And honestly, uh, even when I've gotten rejections so far, a lot of people that have read uh, the book really said, like, I'm passing on this, but you wrote exceptionally strong female characters. So I said, well, that was a success for me. And my light went off again when you're using your computer for your own headlight. Oh, that ain't working, Will. Um, 
but I actually did uh, send my first chapter to like a few female friends uh, that I do know are good readers. Uh, I sent about like six uh, samples out. I heard nothing back, even though I said like I really need your input. I need your feedback on this because I really need to know if I'm doing this right. The best comment I actually ended up getting, essentially the only comment that I ended up getting was that um, a friend of mine who has actually published uh, two novels, and I think she's got an adult novel that's I think in the process of publication. I don't know if it's been accepted yet. I haven't talked to her about it. Um, <clears throat> She sent me back an email saying, like, yeah, I'm not a big fantasy reader, but I will tell you that this will be exceptionally good for young girls. Uh, so, yeah, that was at least, that was at least, like, feedback that I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm probably on the right track, track with this. Uh, <clears throat> but even when I started this story, I really didn't know why I needed this to be an all-female cast. Uh, it was just, like, an instinct. Uh, but about... After I had written like a third of the novel, I kind of, I think some people have like those instincts where like they know what the story is supposed to be, but they have to go through the process. I love, uh, <clears throat> uh, Glenn King is like a former Disney animator who always said like, it always felt like my characters were really always there, I just had to discover them. And he mentions that when he talks about how he designed the Beast for Beauty and the Beast. And, uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite characters from Disney, by the way. But a uh, third of the way through uh, writing the book, I kind of realized, okay, what I had noticed with, like, most of female hero characters in novels, when they're the main focus, um, <clears throat> there's almost always a trope that there is, like, a heroic man in the background or something like that. He often doesn't do much. He's usually used for comedic purpose. But something I really realized that I did not want to deal with that trope uh, for a minute. You've seen this as like Tuxedo Mask in uh, Sailor Moon, a little bit of uh, Xander from Buffy. And uh, although I like Xander and I love uh, uh, how he interacts with all the female characters in that series, I said, uh, one thing I really didn't want to do with that trope was that I did not want there to be a sense of <clears throat> I did not want a sense of damsel in distress as this uh, story went on I said like from the very beginning uh, the heroes are female the villains are female and uh, we are not going to pay attention to the guy's side and I think one of the reasons I really wanted to try that was I said that uh, there is always going to be an instinct with any reader when they're reading like a uh, a story that's focused on a female hero, they'll always expect, like, a major male character to show up and save the day. And I pretty much said, like, we're not doing that with this book. Uh, these ladies are in charge. Uh, they they have their strengths, and they need to build upon each other, and uh, that that's how it needed to be. And actually, one of the best reasons that I was interested in doing a sequel to this book, even though it hasn't been published yet, I thought this worked for a good way that uh, when I did introduce there's more male characters in the second book, it really fo refocused me on like saying where do these people need to exist in this uh, world. So that was a fun idea to do, and like one of the one of two reasons I thought that writing a sequel would be worth my time. And so far, while it's been sl sluggish. It has been a good, good experience, and even like getting rejected by so many agents has been a good experience. It's it's helped me in a long way. So that's your little Arthur Arthur uh, amateur Arthur 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 Arthur. Mm. Yeah, I took speech in fifth grade. It didn't do jack. All right, I'll see y'all next time.